The train, for its size, is the fastest vehicle on land, and the locomotives of Redcliffe Loco Yard are the power behind the stations, industries and train lines that make up the well-renowned Redcliffe and Guinea Bridge Railway. This is Redcliffe Railway Tales. Times had never been more turbulent for the Redcliffe and Guinea Bridge Railway. It was now clear to everyone that the railway was being targeted by saboteurs. Although PC Rosa, the deputy chief of the Redcliffe Police Force, had finally been able to arrest one of them, the crisis was still far from over. The day after Rosa made the arrest, he and Mr. Eric were discussing how they were going to end the crisis. Surely you can get the whole force to protect the railway, can't you? I'm afraid I can't guarantee that, Alex. There's been talk of a region-wide police strike, you know. What? Why now of all times? They want higher wages, better working conditions, etc. I personally don't agree with the strikes and feel satisfied with the quality of my job, so I won't be joining in with them. But then again, if the rest of the region isn't willing to give your railway protection, then there's little I can do. Hang on, I thought police strikes were illegal in this country. Not anymore, didn't you hear? The government recently abolished that law. <sighs> Lord, give me strength. Crime will go through the roof in this region if the strike goes ahead. I know. But again, there's little I can do about it except work my arse off arresting as much criminal scum as I can. For now, we'll just have to wait and see what happens. Now, if you'll excuse me, I gotta get back and interrogate Miss Naomi. I have to go now, too. We're slowly but surely working our way through paying off this railway's debt, and I have another appointment with Sir Thomas to update him on how the repayment's going. Very good, Alex. I'll see you soon. So, Susanna Naomi, you're the finest of criminal scum I've ever nicked, let me tell you. The long arm of the law has had its eye on you for quite some time now. Your criminal record is very, very deep. Assassination, grand larceny, unlawful espionage, terrorism, assault and battery, smuggling, arson, computer hacking, and, most recently, industrial sabotage and public endangerment. You are a piece of work, aren't you? Now, I'll be honest with you, Miss Naomi. You're here because we need your help. We know that you've been working for a team of saboteurs who've been attacking the Redcliffe and Guinea Bridge Railway in recent months. Now, hopefully, you're willing to do the right thing. We're willing to considerably reduce your sentence and provide you police protection from them. And all that I ask in return is that you reveal the identity of your team leader. Yes, well, that sounds like a pretty good deal. But I think I've got a better one. How about I give you the finger, and you give me my phone call? Hmm. You disappoint me, Miss Naomi. You can't scare me with this crap. I know my rights. 
Miss Naomi, the Radcliffe and Guinea Ridge Railway has been in a perilous situation for months now, and I am determined to put an end to it. I don't want to use force, but I will get you to talk by any means necessary. Now tell me, who are you working for? D George Fartar Bensonbury. George Fartar Bensonbury, eh? Miss Naomi, I know you're playing dumb with me. I'm telling you now that if you give me any more joke names, I will zap you. Now I'll ask you again, who are you working for? Your mother's name is a joke. Ha ha ha! Ah! All right, all right. It's Michael. Michael Rosen. Not the writer. He's a different Michael Rosen. Right. What does he look like? Large, very large, yes. He is big man with an even bigger stomach. Go on. He wears orange every single day. It's his favourite colour. And he has an incredibly bushy beard. Right. That should be enough to identify him. Thank you for cooperating, Miss Naomi. As promised, we'll make sure your sentence is reduced and put you in witness protection. Oh, and, uh, I'll get you on the phone to your lawyer, too. Thank you, officer. That evening at Dartmurst, David pulled into the station with his last train of the day. It was very late, and he'd been assigned to take a petrol train back to Redcliffe the next day. The petrol wagons were already waiting for him, so after turning around on the loop, he coupled up to them. Early the next morning, two fuel trucks arrived from the Darthurst refinery to load David's train. As soon as the fuel was loaded, the conductor blew his whistle and David set off. Soon, he was approaching the top of the incline. He tried to shut off power and brake for the descent, but found that he couldn't. What the? Why am I still accelerating? David tried again and again. But no matter how hard he tried, he couldn't cut his power. He rapidly picked up speed on the incline and was sure he'd crash at the bottom. But miraculously, he was able to stay on the tracks. But still, he continued to speed uncontrollably through Blue Hive and towards the tunnel. The conductor had already radioed a warning to the control centre, who immediately cleared a path for David and passed the warning on to Mr. Eric. Then he started running along each of the wagons and applied their handbrakes. The control centre also ordered for a derailer to be placed just after the points to the Betscape flyover outside Gingerbridge Junction, in the hopes that David could be derailed and stopped. Yes! That'll stop me! Oh no! Any ideas, sir? No, Carl. Well, I've got one. I could shoot at David's bogies to try and damage his traction motors. That would stop him. I don't know about that, officer. Given how dangerous David's cargo is, shooting at him is especially risky. But then again, it's not like we have any other ideas. Just please be careful and don't hit the tankers. Of course, Alex. Come on then, let's get to the Raiden City crossing immediately. As soon as they were at the crossing, PC Rosa was ready with his shotgun. Here he comes, officer. Get ready. Ow! What are you doing? Sorry, David. We're trying to stop you. By hurting me? <sighs> He's right. I hurt him for nothing. I feel awful now. It's alright, officer. You did your best. And I'm sure he'll understand. Thank you, Alex. But what do we do now? A few workers, and even local residents, tried jumping on board David in order to disable his power, but they all either chickened out or were thrown off by David's speed almost immediately. Meanwhile, in the rolling stockyard, Linda had just returned from an early morning freight run. Vanessa was just uncoupling her when one of the yard workers came running up to her and told her about the runaway. Linda, there's an emergency! David is a runaway, and he's pulling a petrol train. If he crashes, he and everything around him will be going up in flames. 
Mr. Eric wants us to run in front of him and slow him down enough for Henry to land one of the engineers on him to shut off the power. What? But, but that's suicide! I could give you 50 things that could go wrong with that plan! I know, but this is a desperate situation. And I thought you'd agree to this. You really haven't been your usual confident self ever since you returned from crew. I was too confident when I arrived on this railway, and I don't want that to get me into another accident less than two weeks after my previous one. I understand your feelings, Linda, but we must stop him. Many lives are at risk. (sighs) You're right, but I still doubt it will work. I can hear him coming! Linda, what the hell are you doing? Slowing you down! That's it, dear. Keep breaking. Don't worry, dear, you're still slowing him down. Just try to hold on a little longer. I'm under 40. Is he on yet? Not yet, but he will be any second now. Henry carefully lowered the engineer onto David's roof. Oh dear, I don't think any of us were expecting that. Oh, great, just great. Now what do we do? Just keep slowing him as much as you can. Hopefully you'll be able to slow him down enough for someone to jump on at Kingbridge Junction and shut off his power. Slow down, goddammit! As they reached the top of the flyover, David rammed into Linda once again, causing her to begin to tip off the tracks. Be loud, Vanessa! I'm so sorry, Linda. I'll make it up to you. If I ever get out of this alive, that is. I knew the plan would fail. Well, it could have ended far worse. At least you didn't explode like those diesels did in Unstoppable. Charming, Vanessa. What a nice thought to put in my head right after I violently crash. (sighs) I hope David's gonna be okay. Meanwhile, at Guinea Bridge Junction, Ethan was waiting in Platform 1 with a freight train. Just then, Robert sped into the station and stopped in Platform 2 but he had no passengers on board except for Mr. Eric and PC Rosa, and no sooner had he let them off than he sped away again. Sir, what's going on? What are you two doing here? And why is Robert rushing? To clear the line, Ethan, David and his petrol train have become a runaway. If he crashes, it'll cause a major disaster. We already tried stopping him with Linda and Henry, but that failed horribly. But you have the strongest brakes out of all the engines, so we're going to try again with you. But how do you know this plan won't also fail horribly? Because we're going to try something else. I'm going to ride on your tender, couple up to David when he makes contact, then run across David's roof and uncouple him from the petrol train. Meanwhile, you try to slow him down. Your brakes should be able to counteract his power and momentum, allowing one of the engineers to jump onto him at Blue Hive and shut off his power. Afterwards, Quickly move him into the siding before the wagons catch up. Are we clear? Eh, I think so. Good. Uncouple from your train and switch onto the other line. Ethan did so, and PC Rosa climbed onto his tender. Less than five minutes later, David came into view from around the bend. He's coming! Go, Ethan! Ethan accelerated into the tunnel as fast as he could, just before David raced through the station and followed behind. Oh Jesus, not again! Oh 
come on, I think uh, it's almost up. Ah! Officer, what the hell happened? My foot's been crushed. My goodness, can you still make it to David's rear coupling? I don't know, but I'll do my best. He's uncoupled, Ethan. Thank you all so much. That explosion would have taken me with it had I still been coupled to the train. You're welcome, David. But why couldn't you stop? I think I found the culprit. This magnet was in your power circuit, David. When you turned your power on this morning, the magnet kept it turned on, and no matter how hard you tried, it wouldn't let you turn it off. What? How the hell did that even get in my power circuits? Another act of sabotage, no doubt. You were sleeping in the Darthurst freight yard last night, were you not, David? Yes, I was, officer. Right. I'm going to head up there and review the footage from its security cameras. Aha! That man matches Susanna's description. Hmm. He'll surely have heard that this attempt of his failed, so he could return to try again. Perhaps we could ambush him. Well, well, well. This seems very interesting indeed. What might you be doing here at this hour, Mr. Rosen? Uh, I'm a track worker. Just doing some late night maintenance. If that's the case, then why do these tracks seem in perfect condition to me? And why aren't you wearing any safety clothing? And why are there no other track workers or even work lights around? Um. Well, how do you even know my name? That's irrelevant. What is relevant is that you are under arrest. So we finally seen the last of those sabotages, have we, Mr. Eric? Officer Rosa seems to think so, Otmar. Now he's arrested the leader. Oh, at long last! Now we can finally get back to running the railway and finishing the extension in peace and safety. Uh, speaking of which, sir, has our financial situation improved enough for us to continue it yet? That's difficult to answer, Linda. We may have finished paying back our debt to the bank, but it's left our finances in bad shape. Coupled with the amount we've had to spend on repairing all the damage the saboteurs caused, including to you lot, we currently have barely enough to finish the extension. We'll be taking a massive financial risk if I give the third phase the go-ahead now, but who knows, it might be worth it. I'm going to need a few days to think about it. Well, regardless, sir, we're all just delighted to finally be rid of those saboteurs. Hear, hear, Otmar! As am I. Anyway, it's time we all got to work. Off you go, everyone! With a chorus of whistles and honks, all the engines set off to work. but they couldn't have known that PC Rosa had actually arrested the leader's partner. The actual leader would soon be giving the railway a very, very, very bad time. But that is actually a pretty long story for another day.
Oh, Mr. Eric, you're invaluable. You run so many trains to catch and soon there will be more. You're always on like any other, so I'll be selling my car. Oh, Mr. Eric, what a fine man you are. Oh, Mr. Eric, you're invaluable. You run so many trains to catch and soon there will be more. Your railways are like any other, so I'll be selling my car. Oh, Mr. Eric, what a fine man you are.